Hello there, welcome to another video on investing on the stock market. If you have any questions about today's video or any of my other videos, drop me a comment down below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. So I've got a bit of a different topic today, a really fun one. And it's about the US and how dominant of a economic force the country is. Now I've always been fascinated by the US and I thought I would run through some numbers to show you how big the US is financially and economically compared to the rest of us. So the, we start off with the GDP, the gross domestic product, which is basically how much economic output a country has combined. So with a population of 325 million, quite a large country, it has 19.3 trillion, so 19,300 billion US dollars in annual GDP, that's nominal GDP. And to compare China with a population of 1.3 billion, so that's four times as many people, only has thir well, only 13 trillion in GDP. So China is still lagging a little bit behind. And China is quite developed now, and there's so many people there. So the US is really doing quite well still. And the total stock market cap in the United States, so that is how, how much market cap is being traded on the country's stock exchanges. So for the US, we have the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ, which are the two dominant stock exchanges. And they have a combined value, all the companies on these two exchanges, of about 30 trillion. In comparison, Japan has 6 trillion, China only has 5. So 6 times as much market cap as China, the US has. So most stocks are being traded in the US. These are not all US companies, there's a lot of Chinese and Japanese companies listed in the US but most of them are uh, domestic companies. And 13 out of, out of the world's 20 richest people, so these are multi-billionaires, Jeff Bezos leading the way, of course, are American. They're born and living in the US. I think China has two, uh, France has two, and then Mexico, Spain, and the Netherlands has one each, if I remember correctly. And in the same ratio, 12 out of the 20 largest publicly traded companies, so those are companies you can invest on on the open stock market, are US corporations. Um, I think there's quite, a, I think there's like five Chinese and then two Japanese and a, a Dutch company or something like that. And of course, the, the, the business is, is the main strength of, of the US. And as, a, as an economy, it's the world's second largest exporter. So they send out uh, more goods out and services out of the country than any other, any other country apart from China. And it's the world's largest importer. So they buy more stuff than any other country does. But of course, the US is by far the world's largest economy, as you can see. So it's only natural that they are the second largest uh, exporter and the, the largest importer but of course the most important thing is being the biggest Im uh, exporter and not importer that means you rely on others and the main strength of the US is by far the, the companies in every sector and they dominate worldwide um, just think about how many American businesses you have a personal relationship, you have a customer relationship, um, and think about how many Chinese companies you have a relationship. You can see it's almost all the companies you buy things from over the internet, or movies you watch, or uh, what computers you buy, or video games you play, are produced in the US. And almost half, so 43% of the revenue from the S&P 500 companies, so those are the 500 largest companies in the United States, they make 43% of their money from overseas, so that's internationally. 
So you can see how well these companies are doing internationally. And this, this is just to put the US in perspective and how big of an economy is. The states of California with 2.6 trillion, Texas with, with 1.4, and New York with 1.2 trillion, that's in GDP, those three would all make the list of top 15 countries in the world. California would be the sixth largest economy in the world if these three were countries. Think about that. So these countries, these states, sorry, produce more GDP than most European countries. And, and by far more than South American, African and Asian companies. And just some of the companies we all know and love, and this is just to sh show you can't really go far in the world without meeting a, a, an American company. Have you used an Apple product? Have you seen an iPhone lately? Do you have a computer? Do you use the internet? Have you ever flied with an airplane? Have you ever watched a movie? Do you stream movies on the internet or watch TV series? Have you ever driven a car? Do you have a computer? Have you ever been at a construction site? Have you ever used um, a car or anything requires oil or petrol? Have you ever been to the gym? Have you, or have you ever been sick? If you answer yes to all of these, chances are you've bumped into these companies and many more American ones. So that's just to realize how much, how much these companies uh, make from, you know, globally. So let me know what you think about the US. Uh, now the econ actual economy in the US, so unemployment, GDP per capita is also very, very strong and uh, the consumer confidence is high, uh, wages are okay, job, num job creation is strong, and the uh, consumer uh, purchase power, so basically the GDP per capita, so that's how much money the company produces per uh, person, um, compared with the prices of living, the US comes in at second or first. So the US is doing really well, not just um, as a country, but also for all the people living there. Let me know what you think about it. What do you think about the emergence uh, of China, India? Uh, there are some other great countries that I personally like, like Germany, Japan, France, there's Israel even. There's many great countries, but of course the US is the best, the biggest, the boldest so keep doing what you're doing everyone over in the US as always I'll see you guys in my next video